welcome again to another episode of Back to the City in the run-up to Palm Fest. I was extremely excited when I was shown the lineup for Palm Fest and I saw that my friends in SAS would be closing out the festival on Saturday. In this episode, we're going to take a kind of journey through the history of SAS and talk a bit about the new EP, Wet Paint, that's going to be released later this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when will it be out? October 7th. Okay, October 7th. Yes. Brilliant. So of course, this is Stephanie and Willem. Yes. yes. <laughs> One... <laughs> I'm Simon, and this is Stephanie and Willem. Uh, one half of SAS, the other half being Alex and uh, Joey, mm -hmm. Joey on the drums. Mm -hmm. You have Bang It Records together, is that right? Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> <laughs> it does <not> exist. <laughs> this, is, this is the second time we've been asked about this. So. This is like a, I, or what were you going to say? Well, it was just, it was an idea we had, because um, Stephanie's got a four track and we're both interested in recording and yeah. just, you know, doing everything in music, mm -hmm. whatever. But uh, yeah, um, but yeah, we're also both pretty busy, and <laughs> the whole thing just kind of fell apart as soon as we thought of the name. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. so, a shame because it's such a great name. Well, but, I mean, it could happen someday. Yeah, you know, as we are in like five bands and stuff. You don't need to um, record and release stuff on your own because, for example, you have access to Pearl, which is the Pearl recording studio which is where you recorded Ragged Strawberry, the first single. Yeah. Where did you record the EP? Um, with my friend Sam. Oh, nice. Uh, from middle school. We were best friends. And uh, he went to school for recording, and he helped this guy, like this older guy, through his church put a studio, like a home studio in his basement. And in exchange for Sam, like, helping him set it up and getting, you know, yeah. setting it up, um, he was able to use it for whatever he wanted like whenever he wanted okay. so he's trying to like get more experience recording and we decided to go with him because yeah and he did a good job yeah he definitely did a great job oh. <laughs> <laughs> i was talking with stephanie before the interview about how, how to do this there's one song on the ep is released already the single velvet mm -hmm. okay so we'll really delve into that one uh, and then there's three other songs and we'll talk about those and play some little snippets and you know a little bit of, of them will kind of be hidden beneath our voices, but you have to wait until October uh, for, you know, the, for the full experience. Of it's the, true. Of the EP, of course. So yeah. long. Let's, let's begin at the beginning then. Okay. Let's have the story of Sass. Oh, no. So it began with Stephanie. Yeah. Stephanie's songs. Um, who was the second band member uh, to get involved? Oh, geez. Well, Alex. Alex. I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, me and him. Alex McCormick. Alex McCormick. We met through my friend Jaylee, our both our friend Jaylee, and he played bass. And I, had, this is like two years before I'd ever been in a band at all, like mm -hmm. before Tony Pichka. Yeah. And we always talked about how one day we're going to be in a band together. And a year after Tony Pichka started, I felt, finally felt ready to start my own band. Because starting out, I really only felt comfortable behind a guitar. I didn't even really like, to talk into the microphone or yeah. sing into the microphone it's ever. Daunting. <laughs> yeah. It's it was nerve wracking. Now I'm like so, before you take the plunge. Way more into it. But yeah. yeah. So Alex was first. And then actually in Reggae Strawberry, Jared was our first drummer. Yeah. From the Florists and from also the forests. many bands. Yes, yeah. totally. Yeah. Um, and then he just ended up being really busy. So Joey lives with Alex and um, yeah. he was gonna just like fill in for a couple shows. Sure. And then he was like, well, I really like this band, so I want to be in it. Um, Willem came before Joey, actually. I skipped Willem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, how, so how did you get involved in the band? So I met Stephanie because I was kind of obsessed with her other band, Tony Pichko. Yeah, understandably. So <laughs> I might even drop everything else I need to do to go to the Tony Pichko show that is happening immediately after we track this interview. So I, I understand <laughs> the obsession. And uh, so I know, knew her from just going to a lot of their shows. And uh, yeah, um, just kind of like, I don't know. We were both in the basement of this crazy mansion over by Cedar Lake uh -huh. that like sometimes has shows. Super eccentric rich guy owns this apartment building and hauled out the back third of it. Have you been there? I think I might have been. 
There's a cat bath show there. That's like why we went. Okay. Yeah. I, I've been to a place that meets this description. <laughs> if anybody's watching this and uh, has the hookup, I'd love to go back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it happen. Those, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd love to play so, there. But so this is, is this where you met? No. no. Where, this is where... Well, this is where I first decided Rome was a person to me, um, because people are, you know, like you play a lot of shows and like yeah. friends of friends, and it's just like, you know, I don't really know who everyone is, even if I've like seen them a lot of times until sure. I have like a real connection with them. Yeah. And then, uh, well, on that night, I was like, a a special place to meet someone or like to hang out with someone, mm -hmm. um, just randomly. And yeah. B, he played piano, and I was like. You were playing piano there. Yeah, there was a piano there, uh -huh. and he's like a super good piano p p piano player. Yeah, I can't say pianist because it sounds well, like you penis. Just did. I did, but it sounds like penis. <laughs> and, so will there yeah. be any Willem uh, piano playing in sax? I mean, I'm down. Yeah, we haven't done it yet. Willem? He doesn't have a piano. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a piano. He, I have like some <laughs> not great keyboards, and I have like a synthesizer. We might bust out someday. Two but reasons just, to go back to the mansion. Yeah. yeah, many reasons, and yeah. all the reasons. And if, if your initial playing of the sass songs, your solo songs, uh, to Alex was pre-Tony Pichka, then that was probably around about the same time that Alex and I were meeting in Alex's oh, yeah. English class, which I was the teacher of. <laughs> it's very true. Full circle. With, Although yeah, exactly. most With... songs in sass have been written like in the past year. Right, Except okay. for one of them. So you had you had solo songs. You played those to Alex. He wanted to be in a band with yeah. you. Yeah. But then other songs have become the sass songs. I'm a little bit like a writing songwriting addict. Yeah. How I guess many a lot songs, of people are. How regularly do you write songs? Oh, all the time. It's like a coping mechanism. Yeah. It's like how I deal with life. Absolutely. Writing songs. So I've been writing songs since I was like 11. Um, but I didn't used to like record them. Like I now I have a phone memos thing, so yeah. I like record all of them on that. But before that, it was just like notebooks and stuff. So I have a lot of lyrics that are like not good from previous years. It's just not as good. Not as yeah. good. You're getting better. Right. So. I used to write when I was like 11. I would write about like love and stuff, and I had never fallen in love. And now I don't write about love as much for whatever reason. Little bit, yeah. maybe. Lots of love it's songs. masked by other things. Yeah. So, if the songs, your solo songs that you had when you were first playing Alex, the solo songs that you had at the mm -hmm. time, and not the sass songs apart from one, uh, right? Which is the one? Is on oh beeswax. Oh beeswax. That's I wrote when yeah. I was like eighteen or nineteen. Ah, I'm glad that that made the cut. I love beeswax. I'm glad. I've, that yeah, you do. I've only had. I've just been listening to it, having, maybe because you shared the. Email. Yeah. There's a question on the tip of my tongue that's tied up? Is that tied up. Tied up. Like, like a, a person. Present. Like a present. Okay. I have a question on the tip of my tongue that's tied up like a present. I forgot to rap. I forgot to rap. Well, that's, that's how the song begins. You did remember to wrap this one up and put it on the EP and uh, give it to us um, as a present. So well, how did this one song uh, end up being on the SAS EP? Um, well, I guess it's just one of the songs that has actually survived and I like have it just completely memorized. I don't think I've ever previously to SASS recorded it or written mm. it down anywhere. And when I wrote it initially, it completely came out in one chunk. Like I picked up the guitar mm. and just wrote the entire song from beginning yeah, which, to end. Has that ever happened to you before? It's very seldom not, happens in general. Not like literally beginning to end. Yeah, no. Yeah. Usually I'll be like, I'll maybe make it through like a chorus and then stop and like have to like think about what I want to do next. But this, I mean, it doesn't really change much guitar wise. I just like, and I didn't want to add any other guitar parts or anything. Yeah. I remember when I first brought it to the band, um, there was talk of wanting to like make it longer or like jam on it for a while. And I was like, no. <laughs> Can you remember William, when, uh, when Stephanie first brought uh, this, this song, Beeswax to the band? Yeah, and this song was actually the first song that made me think, oh, she's a really good songwriter. <laughs> so where, in what context did you first hear Stephanie's songs? So sh um, we met up at a florist show, actually. Yeah. And Stephanie had never seen them before. 
And mm-hmm. That's right. Anyway, just checking out the show, and afterward went back to my house, which wasn't too far from the Triple Rock back then, uh, with my roommate, and we were just playing each other, each other's songs, and she mm-hmm. played this one. I was like, wow, like that. Those other ones were cool. This one's like. <laughs> and the other ones she played did not survive in assess. No, they didn't yeah. survive at all. Like I don't even. Not remember. because of me. I didn't tell no. her this was the one song that I was really into. But, but. no, it's just me. originally meant to be a fifth song on the EP. Okay. The recording didn't really turn out. And it's the song Role Model. Do you know that one at all from live shows? I, I probably had it's is, like had is the okay. one that's like dun it. Oh dun it. Yeah. I can't be myself. That one do you know? I do rec yes. Okay. I think yeah. It just the recording kind of lacked the heaviness. That yeah, it needed, that, that song needs. You know, it like yeah. didn't have the life of the live performance, and I'm not saying it has to be like exactly as intense, mm. but I didn't want to have like a lackluster recording of it. What I was gonna yeah. say. Oh, is, sorry. Oh no, no, it's fine. I derailed myself. Um, but what I was saying, <laughs> just like the songs on the EP kind of made sense to me, um, texturally, I guess. Just mm. that that. Not necessarily that they would each have their own character, or not that I thought about it in those terms, but you mm. put that pretty well. Mm. Just like to mix up tone and show the different sides of sass, you know? Yeah, because I think it there is, like, certainly in a very emotion. there's an emotional component, and one, I think I, to me, there's like a yearning, and it, I feel like each of these songs kind of encapsulates like a thought process or like, being in a particular moment and like really living in that moment, working through one's thoughts or feelings. Yeah. Is that the impression that I get? I mean... Is that something that you feel is true of your songwriting? Definitely. Yeah. Like I said, it's like a coping mechanism. So yeah. I like will just like start writing a guitar part and then I'll just sing. I don't like um, think, hmm, this song is going to be about this. I just start singing like whatever comes out of my mouth and it ends up being like what's been on my mind, you know? Yeah. And I can like, after it's done, I can look back at it and be like, oh, yep, that's what that's about. <laughs> um, yeah, and all these songs are written through like, oh, well, not Beeswax, although Beeswax was its own tumultuous time, but like the other songs were written through a rather tumultuous time. 
were they written in more or less the same tumultuous time? Um, let's see. So the first one that would have been written was Awful. Mm-hmm. And that's my... That's the name of the song. But it's, awful. It's, <laughs> it was, my, it's very far from awful. It's, it's <laughs> my personal least favorite song on the, uh, the album. And it's as, the close to we, it's as close as we get to a title track, too, because it has the It has the lyric. That was Alex's idea to call it that. And Joey and Alex and Willem all just love this song. <laughs> and I, I like was like, no, we can't put it on there. No, no, no. We, I can't even believe we recorded it because I was like, no, no, no. But then we did. And it just, you know, it made the cut. Then XL Dreams was the next one I wrote. Uh, okay. Maybe like a month later. Yeah. A couple months later. You know. Like and then Velvet was written in like a really, really, really depressed time for me in the winter, like late December or early January. Hmm. Um, when I was feeling really isolated. Mm-hmm. Um because so like awful is a little bit of a lighter like tone, I would say. Yeah, you despite know? being cool. Awful. awful. Yeah. It's, it's called awful because it's just, it, we used to call it wet paint actually. Okay. But then awful, we ended up just calling it casually and so it became called that. Yeah. So in awful, it, it's not necessarily that the person is awful, but they like everything awful. Is that right? Yeah. That's the lyric. Mm-hmm. The person likes everything awful. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like playful and like flirtatious. It's like, right. you like everything awful and I shouldn't like you. Yeah. And basically, I shouldn't like you, but I do and I should stop myself from liking you. Yeah, on the basis of what you like. That's like all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to be able to like listen to music together or you know watch him with band or whatever whatever yeah, it is that one's going to do. Especially music. Yeah. yeah. Listen to the Spice Girls. Yeah. If you don't like the Spice Girls, <laughs> bye. <laughs> that's that's the real, real reason band. Jared yeah. left the band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like just just kidding. I'm sure, Jared, I'm sure Jared's a Spice Girls fan. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, we haven't spoken on the subject. I can't going on my to-do list. I really can't believe that. That you didn't speak about the Spice Girls. Well. I kind of can't believe it either. <laughs> it could come up. I don't really know. I mean, I think that he... I, would, I feel like he would have complimented me on my Spice Girls backpack. But I'm not sure if that actually happened. <laughs> yeah. If it didn't, then it should. You referred to thinking or... You use the word mind. You were saying whatever's on your mind. Mm-hmm. So you sit down to write, and whatever's on your mind ends up working its way into the lyrics and the way that the song sounds. Do you think thinking is important for sex, or thinking about thinking? I'm very Try over analytical thinking. in general. <laughs> Try to stop thinking. Um, yeah, I guess I stress myself out a lot in general. Like, and yeah. The one of the only, absolutely only ways I can get it out is through songwriting. So yeah. I yeah. suppose that comes out a lot that way. Yeah. So like in awful, I don't want to think about what we are. Yeah. So not wanting to defi- to define. But something. I also want but to. But then it's like, like I'm exactly. like, in part of me is like, I just want to know. I just want to know. You know. But then the other part of me is like, I just don't want to have to worry about it. Stop worrying. Yeah. You know. So yeah, the, the, this is really the, the first verse. I don't want to think about who uh, about what we are. When I said that, did I take it too far? Is it, you know, maybe maybe we should be defining what this is. But then, like, in a later verse, maybe I think it's the second verse, it feels like this, can, this can't be stable. I'd give it a name if I were able. So then there is this desire and a recognition of... It would yeah. be useful to... Conflicting to, desires. To, yeah, exactly. Which makes For sense. Sure. <laughs> in this song, like, you know, if, if there wasn't the conflicting desires, then there wouldn't be this song. Like, we don't want to necessarily... If, well, like the if way we resolve every thought process, then there'd be less good songs. Right. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's basically like wet paint. So like this whole like EP is just about the state of being with another person, where like the basis of the re- relationship rests on it being undefined, mm. and like it's awful and stressful, but also like wouldn't happen if it was called anything, you know? Right. 
because yeah. there's nothing really to call it anyways. So things that be- become awful. As so, so if in the beginning it's just like the person likes awful things and it's like, well, not, not the, that's not really not related. Not but, serious. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's stressful and I wouldn't write like, it would be boring to write songs like, we have really good trust connection. Uh, yeah. Everything <laughs> makes sense and I have no concerns. You know, <laughs> like what kind of that's song a, would that be? That's a tra- <laughs> that would be a challenge to have to write a I'd good have to write about other problems song. not personal problems you know I'd have to reach out outsource my songwriting subject yeah. matter <laughs> you have um, you know I, you mentioned a while ago uh, to, I think just at a show that you know uh, the some of the there was this new phase of sass songs where there was less sadness oh though. yeah that's um, kind of true yeah so and so, the, so this is an extra wave of sass songs like beyond the songs that are on the EP then? Would yeah, I would say so. I'd say my songs I've been writing this year have been, I wouldn't say happy per se, mm. but they're more like, uh, there, there's more strength in them. It's less like me fighting with my own inner demons like about like an external relationship and they're yeah. more like, I'm going to get through this thing because fuck it, I'm going to get through this th- Thing, and it's like my yeah. own personal stuff, you know? Exactly, yeah. Which feels a lot better. And yeah. I also feel like my songwriting is better because it's like, well, of course, the more you write songs, the better you get at it. But also, I'm now that I'm used to being in a band and like writing for a band, I'm actually mm. thinking about all the different components of a band. And I'm like, I don't have to be playing throughout the entire song, Yeah. which I used to feel like I had to. <laughs> because you could, yeah, because you write the song structure. Right. And then you feel attached to those parts. But if you're mm-hmm. writing a song, once you know that you have like a really solid band and you can trust everyone and, and it's more exciting. Totally. So is that happening more and more then? Yeah, there's like more more and more dynamic shifts, more and more instruments dropping in and out. I have a I'm more I would say I'm more particular about like what the other members of the band are doing before I would just like be like, here's my song. Yeah. do what you will and then people just write all their parts and I wouldn't think about that but now that I I don't want to ever like control people or anything but I yeah. have more of a vision um, luckily Wom and everyone in the band generally just write really good parts for themselves anyway mm-hmm. but sometimes <laughs> I have a little bit of like guidance yeah so, yeah what's what, what's your sense of the like the uh, have, are you conscious of there having been shifts in oh, in the band in like yeah. the songwriting style or the manner in which the band uh, collaborates, like going from like the initial song structure to what you play to an audience? What's your sense of how the band has shifted over time? Well, yeah, uh, <clears throat> like Stephanie said, at the beginning she would just like give us, she would write the whole song, like get it out, do her catharsis thing, mm-hmm. bring it to the band, and then just like. Like she said, we'd all just do our thing. So some of those early songs, I feel like, are kind of jumbles or, like, I don't know, what, like Red Wine especially, it's just, like, a lot going on all the time. It is. <laughs> and, uh, Red Wine is a song that you, that is in the, the current sass sets, or is it the mm-hmm. song? Yeah, yeah, we still play it sometimes. We kind of retired it for a while, brought it back. Um, we have a recording of it, but it's not mixed or mastered. Okay. It, yeah. it didn't really turn out right. Mm-hmm. I was really tired when I was singing the vocals, so it didn't have like the. And also, there's some tweaks and adjustments I feel like we've made since then, too. Yeah. So that was a relatively early song, and it was yeah. a song where everyone was. Fr- uh, fr- I mean, still, everyone's free to to write their parts, but mm. like, especially so back then, just free. Is, is, I, I didn't feel like... comfortable being a band leader at first. Right. I didn't feel comfortable talking to a microphone to an audience. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel comfortable directing a band. It was yeah. it, This has been a huge learning experience for me, um, cause especially after a full year of just kind of taking, like, the back, like, maybe, like, sometimes speaking up, but, like, as a, you know... As just a guitar player, basically. So, so like in Tony Peachka, are you saying? Yeah. Yeah. Although you do write some songs for Tony Peachka too. I do, and that started to happen more over time for yeah. Tony. I've written a lot more stuff, like of our newer stuff that isn't released. Yeah. Um, yeah, some great songs. On the first, on Dirty Knees for Tony yeah. Peachka, the only song that I wrote was um, 
Creeping Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not, and I didn't write the words. I just wrote the, I wrote the Creeping Charlie just that part. But she was like, what is a lawn but blank? And I was like, Creeping Charlie. <laughs> so. And the she being Melissa. She being Melissa, yes. Yes. Yes, Mel. We're going on tour soon, which is really exciting. Oh, exciting. I know this isn't about Tony Pichka. Yeah. But... Oh, Tony, this is the time. This is a bit of the interview that's about Tony Pichka. Yeah. So when you're working on a song, like, how do you know that it's a sass song, say, as opposed to a Tony Pichka song? Um, most of my songs, if are are just gonna be sass songs, because most of my songs are more emotional yeah. or heavy or whatever. Um, and Tony Pichka kind of has a lighter, more goofy weird vibe yeah so if i write it like kind of a goofy song that then it goes to tony fichka yeah like our one of our new ones i don't know or like if it's fast and mm-hmm. staccato and yeah <laughs> but i wouldn't be opposed to doing more goofy songs with sass yeah and goofy, goofiness and emotion are not necessarily incompatible yeah i mean we yeah. guess we have some like where's my phone was this kind of goofy yeah, we don't yeah we don't really that play it really anymore. Survived, but <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's goof? There's goof, goof in goof and sass. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh man. Not that. I mean, much. there are goofs in sass. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're pretty yeah. serious, I guess. Yeah. We were talking about strength. Yeah. Like personal strength. For me, as a songwriter, I find songwriting really helps work through. Issues oh, one hundred percent for and, sure. And William, you're a songwriter too, mm-hmm. and you're really good songwriter. Yeah. Will there be um, Will there be Willem pen songs in sense, or will there be what? Will there be a separate um, outlet for Willem songs? There's kind of a song of mine in sass. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I wrote the second verse. Yeah. Ah, um, it. But that's yeah. that was just something I jammed up at practice and thought up lyrics to on the bus, like. Um, it wasn't really a, like, sit down, like, contemplate, whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have plans to start my own project. kind of want to, I want to learn how to, um, record myself. Hmm. I want to buy a computer that can, like, process that kind of thing, because mine is really yeah. old and crappy, and, yeah, I might be playing drums in a new band, and so I just kind of, I don't want to okay. go out there and front a band. I don't think that I necessarily have enough to say or like should be taking up space you know mm. and also I think that a lot of my songs I don't know my main goal is just to record them and to hear how it sounds to hear to make it sound like it sounds in my head yeah yeah I'm on track there's a yeah. top secret SoundCloud that Willem has with some <laughs> old songs of his that I those are goofy listen to <laughs> like when we like first met basically like um, when I was deciding if I wanted him to be in sass. And they're really, really cool and interesting. He writes really interesting uh-huh. guitar parts. So I really hope you do get the setup to do this. I honestly feel like your songs don't necessarily need, like, a full band. Because they're, like, interesting enough on their own. Well, because most of them I just wrote on an acoustic guitar by myself. Like. Yeah. I mean, that's what I did for sass. Mm-hmm. Stephanie and I feel that there is a Willem space. There is a, <laughs> there is a space for Willem. You should be like Ellie space. Smith or Alex, Alex G or something. Do like a little school shit. Moving on from the Willem portion <laughs> of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> There's the Tony portion and the Willem portion. Tony Peachful portion. Yeah, Exile Dreams was uh, a song that was written shortly after Awful, mm-hmm. you were saying before. And in... In one place on the internet, there was a description of Sass as cuties with XL dreams. Oh, that's because XL dreams is my philosophy. Yeah. So okay, what is what is the philosophy? What's Stephanie's philosophy? Um, it's Scrab- basically based. it. Yeah, I yeah. drew some Scrabble letters. That's and they were XL dream. It was XL dream, extra large dream. That's right, right? Seven letters. So yeah. Um, but I was just like, that's cool. Like. I love that. And I have this list on my phone of like song name ideas and stuff. Yeah. And so I put it on there, but it just kind of resonated with me. Um, I mean, dream big, obviously, extra big. And like, I personally don't compromise in like what I want out of the world. I feel like if I'm going to be here, I'm just going to do like what I want. Yeah. Like, work for that, so. you know? And if it's, you know, I just, I think it's about no sacrifices. 
That's what the XL in, Dreams philosophy. In your dreams, yeah. Yeah. I also dream all the time. Like, I had some just insane dreams last night. Oh. I'm envious. I <laughs> <laughs> do you dream, Will? Oh, uh, yeah, I do dream. <laughs> I had a very intense dream last night. Oh, I want to hear it. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> I was always gonna say what it is. I was like, oh man. <laughs> Everyone wants to hear, it, but sadly, the the Willem portion of his his pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you have to give me a loan in here. <laughs> Excel Dreams, the song, ends with uh, dreams too big to touch. Mm. Is that the, Am I hearing that right? Yeah. Dreams too big to touch. So sometimes one's dreams can be so extra large. That they're unattainable? That they're unattain that's what the lyric is getting at, yeah? But what do you think about that idea in that, just that lyric um, in that song? I think it's like that I act with a lot of confidence, but I also have doubts, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm... I like, I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to compromise. Yeah, this is what it is. But then, like, the truth of the matter is, like, I have a hard time, like, keeping my shit together, basically. Yeah. Like, one of my goals is I really want to buy a van and, like, just travel. That's, mm. like, the dream right now. Let's travel and tour and play? Or... Travel and tour and play. Yeah. And I want to, like, work out organic farms. And just, I just want to, I don't want to be tied down. I grew up yeah. in Minneapolis. I've always been here. But part of me feels like, oh, I just can't get my shit together. Like, I need to save more money, and I need to do this, and I don't know. But I do think I do, I'm more leaning toward the, it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, and don't don't let it happen too soon, please, because you know, <laughs> <laughs> we would miss you. <laughs> I'll be back. I don't yeah. know. I'll be around. I think it's, yeah. Traveling is, like, necessary for, like, my soul to feel fulfilled. Mm-hmm. And I'm to have experiences to and to grow. So one, one can only grow so much, perhaps, in a room as a songwriter, reflecting, mm -hmm. working through one's emotions and feelings. Like right. One also has to travel. And, totally. And one of the new songs I wrote, I yeah. went on like a two-week-long trip in April to Denver and to New Orleans. Oh, yes. And like that was a goal fulfilled because like, during the winter, like when Velvet was written and I was in that really dark place, I was mm. like, I need to start saving so I can leave for a while because I'm going crazy. And I saved up and I went on this trip and I wrote one of our new songs What's during it? that time. Does it have a name? Yeah, it's called Spoiled by Rotten. Ah, that's a good name. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's in 5-8 at the beginning, which is kind of weird. Is that what it is, 5-8? Mm -hmm. I've never, I didn't mean to write it in that time signature. I'm not like a trained musician. I don't know anything. So yeah. Spoiled by Rotten. Mm -hmm. um, what's Willem's sense of what Spoiled by Rotten is about? <laughs> um, I'm curious. You know, it's kind of hard to hear the lyrics over the whole band. Um, oh, you don't know the words. Or just, or just say even no, just the I phrase. know the words. Spoiled by, Spoiled by Rotten. Um, I'm not not gonna pontificate on this one. Okay. Really? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. What's Stephen's sense of what Spoiled by Rotten? Um, it is about privilege a little bit. I would mm. say. Mm -hmm. Um, because I have done a lot of sketchy things throughout my life. Mm. Not really sketchy. I mean, nothing horrible. But, like, anything that I have done, I've been able to just forget about and not suffer any consequences because, often. Because of your privilege. Because of my privilege as, like, a white person or yeah. a girl or living in America or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, the lyric is spoiled by rotten things I've forgotten. But didn't have a price to pay. Wow. So that's one part of it. <laughs> and then it's also just about um, not waiting around for people anymore and not waiting around to like, you know, just kind of like whatever is here is enough, feeling kind of in the present and grateful for like what I have. Do you think it takes a certain self-confidence? Because we were talking about self-confidence a moment ago. Do you think it takes a certain self-confidence to be self-critical? and to yeah. acknowledge one's privilege, perhaps, uh, probably. to some extent. That's true. I mean, when I was feeling really shitty, I couldn't really see beyond 
that. You How know? shitty things are. Yeah. But being when I was traveling, I was feeling very fulfilled and very in my element. But I still, in a way, I'm kind of going through a different phase where I have trust issues. And the song is also about that because I'm so used to being alone now and so mm. used to like, and I'm like really strong, but I also have a really strong wall around me. Yeah, it's a quandary, isn't it? Those <laughs> two those things come together. Personal strength and strong walls is a good way to. And it also think it makes me it. feel like I can sympathize with other people I've known who had trust issues that I didn't like used to understand because mm. now I'm like in that position. Is that something that some of the new songs are working through then? If the, if the songs are always working through something, yeah, is it I'd true they're so. always working through something? That's like a defining right. feature of a song. seems so, yeah. <laughs> For the most part. There's yeah. a couple songs that aren't. There's one song called 30 Minutes okay. that is more like abstract. It is about stuff, but it's like it's like really fast, punky sort of thing. Most of the songs are like two minutes long. <laughs> yeah. 30 minutes is, cl- is two minutes long? Uh, about a minute, actually, ah. I think. Like a minute mm-hmm. and ten seconds. Why is it called 30 minutes? Uh, there's a lyric that goes, um, this, uh, basically like the sign said 30 minutes and let's see if we get caught, like if we park here for longer than 30 minutes. Ah, it's just kind yeah, of a, okay. it's a little bit jokey of a song. Is it goofy? It's a little goofy. There is, I have There is goofy in sense. Maybe we should change our name to goofy. Like, let's zoom in on uh, the songs that we can play the entirety of, the two singles. Oh yeah. So Velvet is mm-hmm. the most recent single and uh, there it seems like the question of whether one is doing all right um, is at the center of that song. So the chorus, are you all right? I think so. And then by the end, I'm all right is a recurring refrain. Yeah. But there's a intensity to that. What point would you say we've arrived at um, both when like the band as a whole, when the band is playing Velvet, but then also as a songwriter, when you're working through something in this song, what point do you, th- like, these are two very different things, but what point do we arrive at in either sense? Well, the song I originally wrote and recorded as a bobby pin song, my like solo side project thing, uh-huh. that doesn't really happen, but is a thing. And I had only written through the first like chorus. Yeah. And then I uh, like brought it to SAS and they thought it sounded cool. And then like this was like a month or two later. Yeah. Maybe a month later, and I was starting to feel a little bit better. And so that's when the bridge came. This is kind of is this like this is one of the saddest SAS songs, would you say? Or at least Um, on the EP? Yeah, I'd say so. It's I mean it starts out in a sad place and then it ends up being triumphant because I am all came out of it. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. What aspects of the song were written later and was it once you were working on the song with the band yeah yeah um i wrote the second verse at band practice and then the bridge i can't remember if that happened at the first time we practiced it or the next time um do you remember not no i feel like it might have even come in three shifts i feel like it might have been like the first verse and chorus just like by myself and then the second at band practice a month later, and then yeah. the bridge maybe like a week later. Yes, yeah, songs are interesting creatures, aren't they? So it's <laughs> it, it's like compelling to you know catch the different stages of mm-hmm. the, you know, uh, this song becoming itself. The need to be something, the need for this song to be something. Yeah. Which, you know, the, there's yeah. a lyric about needing to be something and in wh- the second verse. When I listen to it, like, because when you listen to a song, you don't hear it in the stages it was written. You hear it all at once. Yeah. And right. When I listen to that song, that bridge part always gets stuck in my head. I'm going, ah, I'm alright, just yeah. to myself walking around. Mm-hmm. And to me, just in the context of the song, it's like just trying to convince yourself. Yeah, like, it actually, is. Yeah, that's what I was getting at when I was that asking, is really like, funny. where do, I didn't want to like, you know, put my interpretation. Of the it's song like defiant. On you. I would yeah. say, I, would I am say going I'm, to be alright. I'm defiant against my own depression. Yes. I feel like the different like types of uh, uh, struggles with emotion that I have or mental whatever. Yes. Um, they they kind of help. They kind of work against each other in a way that like actually makes me productive. Yeah. Like I'm too anxious to sit still. I'm too anxious to like. Do it very well. So I 
do a lot of stuff and then I get kind of depressed, but I'm yep. like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you can't, not, not for too long. I don't know. I'm not to, but like, who knows what the future holds, you know, but. Is the lyrics something more honest in the second verse? Is it the second verse? Yeah. So the first that you wrote in band practice. The first, the second one, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and that's the verse which is the need to be something and something more honest. So there it seems, that almost seems like the most confident moment within the song. Like you're thinking about how it sounds and also what the lyrics are doing together. Yeah. That part, yeah. So it was the first part was written kind of New Year's Day. There was kind of a breaking point for Mm. me with stuff. And I was just like, we can't continue this like gray area anymore. Mm. Pretty much. It was like mutual. Yeah. Um, And like. That was kind of freeing, I guess. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, it's to a, like I, not I, constantly feel like lost or whatever. And it's funny now, like I feel like I don't know, things are better than they've ever been. Yeah. Back when I was like holding on to this confusing state. What's the something more honest there? With, 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 with myself and with everyone else too. Yeah. You know, it's like sometimes you just like tell people what they want to hear or whatever. Yeah. You know, as well as yourself. I'm definitely, like, trying to do that less, you know? I feel like I used to play a lot of mental games with myself where I'd be like, you can be whatever you want to be if you convince yourself of it, and that's not real. You know, sometimes Mm. how you feel is how you feel. Yeah. And it's better to just, like, accept it. Which is, and that's a really exciting thing about the band and the music, I think, because there's the Excel Dreams philosophy that we were talking about, Mm -hmm. and that's wholly positive and and that's great to find within these songs a place for the emotions that are being worked through and for the Excel Dreams philosophy? Is, is that like a crucial aspect of what Sass is doing, do you think? Yeah, I would say that like my one of my biggest goals as a songwriter is for people to hear my songs and if they relate to them, for it to help them, like music yeah. has helped me. That's yeah. like, I really, um, as like an activist or as like a person in the world trying to do good, um, find that like the best way for me to do that is like through music. Yeah. Um, whether it's like teaching guitar at Girls Rock Camp or um, writing songs, I hope people can relate to and like help work through their stuff, and not as much as like a leading voice. I don't feel comfortable like standing on a Facebook pedestal. Um, it just isn't me, you know. But yeah. it doesn't mean I don't care about the issues of the world. Through the medium of songs, then you can help make people. a statement and help hopefully help people. Hopefully, that's that's the goal, and that's another reason why I want to travel. Like, I want to travel for my own self fulfillment, but it's also like, how can I help anyone else or like put any good into the world if I'm not like out in the world a and b in a correct mental state? We're working backwards to the first song. Now we're going right back to Ragged Strawberry. Whatever mental, whatever mental space. That was actually is. a pretty good state. Yeah. Okay, so what's what's the genesis of Ragged Strawberry? Ragged Strawberry was like, before any emotions really were involved for me, yeah. um, I was just like, uh, kind of recently out of a really long-term relationship and like, getting drunk and going to shows yeah, and feeling like a rock so star. Yeah, the and, opening lyric. Yeah, that song like, in the bridge at the end, like, fuck around, fuck around, which mm-hmm. is like, I don't give a shit. I'm yep. like, when we whoever first met it was just like I just didn't I felt really confident and I didn't care and that's part of the reason it was so difficult was like I didn't I kind of the feelings kind of caught me off guard because I was feeling like very yeah autonomous and good yeah and then everything just kind of like <laughs> right and that's a real, that was a that is a real confidence but it's a certain it's just one's one type of confidence I suppose yeah it was like a little party party boost time yeah that quickly the derailed you know. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence to, you know, in the final verse, you're meeting a new girl every night and yeah. you know, all these connections. That's so very good. But it's superficial, gregarious. though. Right. It's not like the kind of like strength I'm writing about now. Yeah. Like that was more just like, you know, that's probably why it was so easy to break, too. You know, like now I feel like I don't know for sure, but I feel like it would be a lot harder for something to like catch me off guard like that, you know? Yeah. But in the meantime, there was the, there was the next wave of sass songs. Yeah! <laughs> that we have, to, we have to thank the sadness for. Totally. I mean, I'm not afraid of sadness. It's going to come and go, and 
I just got to deal with it. And yeah. Realize there's a, another wave of whatever around the corner. It's, yeah, great. Yeah, we wouldn't want to reason away our emotions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish sometimes I like get really down on myself and like I wish I could just write totally weird stuff all the time that wasn't real and didn't relate to me because it can be very vulnerable. Like there was times like yeah. I hated playing the sass songs. Like I wrote these songs about these times I was going through while I was going through them. And then it like, as it was going into this like worst stage, like leading into the winter, yeah. playing these songs like was painful. Yeah. And like, I think maybe sometimes I was almost a better performer because of it. Cause I would just like scream them out of my soul. Cause I yeah. was like, in physical like pain basically like I felt so it in my raw. chest yeah yeah um, but now I can like remember those emotions and channel them on stage but not actually feel like crying after I play or yeah. whatever we have one song left thanks for having us the lyric at the end of the first verse of Ragged Strawberry you were unconsciously waiting for someone to carry you through the doorway back to reality and then there's a the recurring Back to reality. Yeah, that's I guess, an interesting idea. Well, just the idea of traveling back to reality, and in that song, it's unconsciously waiting for someone else to lead you. Mm -hmm. But then I feel like in other songs, the songs themselves are like trying to find a way, like out of a purely out of a subjective experience, mm. like being so caught up in one's emotions. Yeah. Like, what's what? I feel like this idea of this trope of like going through a doorway back to reality is like important for sass but in some of the later songs in different ways than in ragged strawberry yeah what do you think well like i said when i before i wrote that like i had recently ish gotten out of a really long-term relationship so mm -hmm. i think at the time although i was feeling really confident and excited and relieved to be single and alone and yeah you know the bands were doing really well and everything or tony was doing really well yeah um, it's like we were playing we're the main room street. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I still like had this yearning for someone to, I had been so used to having a person and I was just like, where's that person who's going to like, you know, give me meaning mm. like, mm. and you know, whip me into shape when I'm like fucking up, you know, like I'd always had someone who like my ex-boyfriend would like, if I was like, you know, in the middle of nowhere, I could call him and he would pick me up, you know, but Instead, it was just like, oh, here's me and me fucking up alone, you know? Yeah, but it seems like <laughs> well, the person was you. And I worked it out. Like, yeah. it worked out. But, yeah, I, I feel like last summer, it's interesting to think about that, actually, because I kind of, but now I'm, like, not really looking for anyone. But, like, I mean, like, I have my eyes open, you know? But mm -hmm. I don't feel like a whole. I feel very full, you know? Yeah, you feel whole as opposed to a whole. Yeah, I yeah. used to feel like an empty, like need for someone to like got you know hold my hand basically yeah and now i'm walking the tightrope yeah i'm chill you, yeah you, you, <laughs> you can help direct someone else to a door or you can right. find your own way through doors we can all help each other yeah <laughs> on which notes you probably do need to be going through um that door to go and play True. a tony peachka show yeah relatively soon mm -hmm. uh, so we're arriving at the end we have arrived we're going through the door back to the non-episode reality true um, <laughs> <laughs> awful reality. thank you for holding our hand through that transition <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome um thank you for being here absolutely thanks thank for having you. us and i'm looking forward to you ending palm fest yeah we're looking forward to Saturday. playing yeah. yeah so thank you very much for doing that uh, this has been back to the city i look forward to discussing the full sass uh, record when that comes out. Thank you for allowing us to play it. It's some little snippets of the EP, okay. uh, which comes out in October. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks.